about who you're supporting and are you supporting yourself? Are you working against your own best interests or are you working for your own best interests? Think about it. I've come out to support a living wage for all workers, especially Walmart workers. Walmart is one of the largest companies in the world, and they're one of the biggest receivers of corporate welfare in the United States. Each store they open costs the taxpayer approximately $500,000 a year in tax loss Rev tax revenue loss as well as benefits paid to their workers because they're not paid a living wage and those and then their hours are cut the way workers who had to work at walmart yesterday got 25 percent extra of their average daily wage for the past two weeks the problem is that walmart reduces their hours in the two weeks before the holiday so that 25% of their wages isn't really 25% of their wages. Every way they can screw the employee, they do it. And it's so that a few families can just suck up as much money as they can. And then they demonize the, those who receive social benefits, people who receive uh, welfare benefits, people who receive food stamps and insurance benefits. They're demonized even though they work 40 hours a week, but because they work oh, so for a greedy company, that's the only way they can make a living. You mentioned social welfare and corporate welfare. Explain those two terms. Yeah, and, and what else so welfare do? that you give to individuals who are poor and you know, is considered you socialist money, sort of stuff. It's social welfare. Corporate welfare is when you support the profits of the corporation by providing tax breaks to them and you reduce your tax revenue and then they pay their employees so little that they cost the community money. And we can demonize those people. Damn those welfare cheats. You get a and, but men, for it. it's not the you welfare cheats, it's the corporate corporate cheats. So actually, you mentioned the government about, uh, is subsidizing I, some of your charitable about giving. About fair pay? And of course, yes. and, and what is a fair the typical Walmart worker... It's a living wage. It's enough money that someone can uh, house themselves, clothe themselves, have food to eat, and have health care probably not paying income taxes and uh, that's don't get the they can live they can survive the they can have all of the human charity. necessities so you of life so not that not spe that anything special just the basic charity. necessities of life and that's a living wage that's a living wage and uh, Walmart employees are getting that or not no uh, they, they can't be getting it because their employees well, most of their employees would the qualify for food stamps for two hours there that's not a living wage. You You're below hard, the poverty yeah, line. How do you, how do you work hard? If you, you work, work 40 hard, hours a week, yeah. you ought to be That's able to support yourself. You, get chauffeured to the office, you should not have to ha go to the government money. to get you food stamps so the Walton families can be greedy and just get more and more and more money. There comes a point where corporations are not looking out for the yeah. good of society as a whole. And when the inequity in income becomes too great, historically it has always ended in bloodshed. And it's getting to a breaking point. Because heaven forbid you might have to lift your arm and do it yourself, Mr. Green. We have to stop subsidizing the Waltons and we have to require, since they aren't going to do it on their own, we have to require that they pay a living wage and provide full benefits to all of their employees. Everyone and not be able to cut part-time employees out of that package. They have to be forced to give it to everybody. Everyone gets who works there gets insurance. Everyone who works there gets benefits. Even if you're only working 20 hours a week, you still get your insurance. They can afford it. And then we're paying higher prices at Walmart, but we're not paying higher taxes. 
We're not subsidizing really not. The, the Waltons with our tax and dollars. And, and what do they do to earn that money, Mr. Bruce? And I would rather pay the workers here and pay a lar higher price at the store level than pay more taxes and have it go to the top 1% or 0.01%. I'm just kidding. And I'm happy to say that my credit union, I called up to get some information and they were closed, both by credit unions, so they gave their workers off Thursday and Friday and I hope other, other people will do that. Right. And what we have to do, we have the power though. They could be open, but we don't have to shop there. And if people did not shop yesterday, then I'm not sure they'd be open next year. So remember, we can point our finger at them, and I agree with you 100%. They have a nerve being open on Thanksgiving. Oh, like we didn't know what was coming up. We didn't know we had to buy stuff. We're out here in the streets fighting for justice. In this particular case, we're fighting for low-wage workers, specifically at Walmart, but for all, all low-wage workers in every place. In, in the fast food joints, in the other department stores, people should earn a living wage when they work, and they should have benefits, and they should have the opportunity if they want to work full-time jobs and not make them only work part-time jobs and not give them any benefits. So you have a specific mission today, you're in front of Walmart, and you're protesting Walmart. Explain. Well, this is actually our third year out here and coincides with Black Friday. Uh, it started out mostly as a um, uh, Anti-consumer, don't shop, don't all, don't buy all this stuff. But then, as we learn more and more about Walmart, how they treat their workers terribly, they pay them low wages, they run their lives. Uh, if the if the workers try to unionize, they fire them. And we're trying to stand up for justice and in support of the Walmart workers and low-wage workers everywhere. So, what kind of justice are you looking for? What are your demands? Well, we demand that they pay not only a minimum wage, but a living wage. So they could go out and they could actually shop and buy stuff. Um, and, and around the world, Walmart buys its stuff from China and Bangladesh and Vietnam and Pakistan and virtually enslaves those workers. So pay those workers more, pay the workers more here. The, Wal the Waltons have plenty of money. The stockholders have plenty of money. They don't have to get money by cheating these workers and making their lives miserable. So what's the discrepancy between Walmarts and the Walmarts in financially? Well, the, the, the six Walmart kids, they have a wealth of $144.7 billion. That averaged out to approximately $16,000 an hour. Walmart workers average $8.81 an hour and an annual pay of 15,576. So that, that's, that's the average. A lot of people don't know about how bad Walmart and these other places are. So we're letting them know. We're letting them know what happens when they shop at Walmart. And we're letting them know that there are alternatives to that. There are mom and pop stores around. You don't always have to be shopping at the big box stores. Um, find the local places. You might pay a few more bucks, but the money stays locally. And you can go to sleep and sleep well at night knowing that somebody in Long Beach earned a decent dollar and now they have that money to spend in Long Beach too. But a couple of dollars here and a couple of dollars there it makes a big difference for people who don't have money. They want them to shop locally. Well, but we want them to have higher wages too. So then it's a, we could have a spiral to the bottom or we could have a spiral upwards. If, if, the, if we spend more money here, then those employees have more money, they could buy stuff, and, and we could spiral up. Not that we're for rampant consumerism. People need necessities, though. They need clothing, they need shelter, they need food. And we should all be able to have that and, and, and be able to live and not have government handouts. We, the taxpayers, subsidize Walmart because a large percentage of their workers are either on food stamps, or, or um, uh, Medicaid, and that's because Walmart isn't paying them enough to buy food, and Walmart isn't giving them health care benefits, so because we're a caring for society, we're all doing that. We're all helping them. We're subsidizing Walmart. 
That's backwards. That's perverse. They could take some of that $144.7 billion and they could share it with the rest of us. They could show a little bit of love, a little bit of kindness for humanity. I'm here uh, supporting the Walmart workers who want a decent salary uh, who to make at least $25,000 a year, which they don't make. Um, they uh, have to go on food stamps because they don't make enough money. Uh, it was They actually in one store had a box where they were asking people to contribute to food for, for the workers because they didn't have enough wages. They, the wages weren't enough to get Thanksgiving. I guess it was a Thanksgiving, right? Collection. Also, the uh, health care is so terrible. This is the health care uh, insurance is so terrible. They have to go uh, into emergency rooms. And so we as taxpayers end up paying for their food stamps. We end up paying uh, for their health care in the emergency rooms. Also, the Waltons who own this the Walmart, they make billions of dollars, something like 40, they make as much money as the bottom 40% of, of the country. Uh, and they are right now anti-food stamps. They're trying to stop, they're really involved in trying to stop legislation for social programs. Meanwhile, uh, because they don't want to pay taxes. They don't want to pay taxes. They don't want to pay their workers and they don't want to pay taxes to support these people in food stamps and and emer in mer healthcare emergency rooms. So what's the remedy for that? What's the remedy for that? The remedy for well, supporting them, you know, supporting the workers, uh, helping them get unions, helping them do all that. But ultimately, the remedy is get rid of capitalism. Capitalism doesn't work. It's based on greed. It's not based on any kind of helping one another. It's based on greed. You know, profit motive. Right, exploiting your workers, which is exactly what the Waltons do to make their money. Uh, it's made on exploiting the, the our, our world. We are right now in a we're having all kinds of crisis, uh, environmental crisis. That's all part of the exploitation. We produce more than we can even we can even consume, and it's being thrown away in garbage. Uh, I don't shop at Walmart. I have never shopped at Walmart because I see Walmart not only exploiting its workers, but exploiting, here in the United States, but exploiting workers all over the world. And I don't want to be part of that. I don't want to have that blood on my hands just because I think I'm going to cheap, you know, prices. I'm going to get some kind of a bargain. I'm not getting a bargain. I'm actually taking wage work away from Americans because a lot of the stuff that they produce in these other countries at slave labor wages, they actually couldn't produce here. Greed is good. We're successful and everybody sees us as successful. Well, it depends on how you define success. If being filthy rich and being a mean-spirited person who screws their workers in this country and overseas, then yes, you're a success. Let's hear it from Mr. Greedy, the big success. Successful hey. capitalism. Yeah. Hey.